It's Diamond from the Oppenheimer Ranch Project. And we're out here at the front Zone 1 geothermal greenhouse. It has the entire base plate in. The roofing is done. We're about, we just finished up uh, staining some wood over here and we're about to put the cross pieces in here, the cross members. And we'll get the Solex on top of that. Now that is a, we decided to go with that type of polycarbonate. It's called Solex. It's pretty local because it has the highest R value for any polycarbonate. So the way I built these walls, we're going to go up, uh, take a walk, if you stay with us, up to the other greenhouse that's attached to the barn. And these are trash walls. So I built these by incorporating river jack and stone that we have local because we own the river back down here in this mountain. So we have all these resources. So if you're going to relocate, locate where you can have your own quarry, where you can get your own river jacks and your own sand. Pretty important. It's free, so you can do whatever you want. So this is super insulated, R40 all around. I got the base plate in. It has to be tightened down. And that's all you really need for a geothermal climate battery. We're going to be digging these tunnels deeper and putting in what's called drain tile, which is simply corrugated 4-inch drain pipe with a sleeve on it and we'll be sucking the hot air from the top of the greenhouse here the back wall here will be insulated uh, from the top here and pumping it underground so that's the update here the foundation is in it's ready to be closed up I'm not really worried about closing this up I can do that in the winter um, I'm worried about getting all these foundations done because I only have a few weeks left this is the sawmill where we'll be milling the lumber and I installed the second floor so that I can have some people live up there that want to apprentice as sawmills, uh, as sawyers, learn how to cut wood. You're looking at Eight Mile Mesa. Um, you can Google it. There's a dead end road that comes up here, seldom traveled. This whole valley that we're in uh was where the pony express came and colonel macomb came up here in 1854. you can go google the macomb's report and to find out how they came up from abiquiu so this is our main barn which is a wood shop where we'll be constructing tiny homes which is why i installed aircraft doors here these giant barn doors are 18 feet high so you can big bring in and out giant structures into this shop. We got a permit for a house on the first 17 feet of it. So this will be a, this end will be super insulated and the whole structure is going to be heated with a greenhouse that's the full length. You can see the top plate here is going to run all the way down to us. And we'll go up there. We're standing in the zone 1 orchard which is going to have a very high fence. 8 foot so, and it's double fenced to confuse the outdoors. Keep them out. You can see we got a lot of things that are green here, which is not normal. Um, some lavender. Oh, I wish you could smell that. This is catnip. We have a lavender uh, crop here. This is whorehound. Really nice medicinal in the mint family. This is what uh, makes Ricola. <laughs> These are our mustard seeds. <sighs> See those little golden babies in there. We're in the South San Juans right now. We're eight miles from New Mexico through Cold Canyon and Archuleta Mesa is over here. That's due south. So we're coming up to the main structure. This is the big project that I'm trying to get sufficiently done this winter so we can enjoy it. I'm going to put a thousand gallon cistern in here, tunnel water in to the greenhouse. 
because I'm gonna have this jungle shower in here where I can uh, pimp in the winter and take a shower naked out here in the greenhouse because it'll be opaque. You won't really be able to see in, but it'll be glowing and warm. So here's a close up of a trash wall. I don't know how the lighting is, but you can see the bottles that I have in here. Taking up space. It's gonna be freezing cold for the next two days because we have this winter storm coming in. 15 inches are forecast for the divide, which is right up here. The continental divide is only 13 miles from here. So I'm gonna let these set up and then I'll get back to cement work in a day or two. But you can see what it looks like finished. It looks nice and tight, gorgeous. And it has these, uh, I put these all threads in so that I can attach the base plate and also run um, some foam under here so that I can get some, you know, some good seal. So this is a massive greenhouse that's gonna heat the whole barn, wood shop, and home. And we got a couple more days of, of stonework to finish this wall out. See this side is finished in the corner. Now, when you're doing these walls, it's important, I don't know if you can see this, to put at least one rebar in. And I put a rebar at le uh, around a foot up from the bottom. That gives you a reinforced wall. Um, Southwest Colorado, if you're watching, wake up. <laughs> so this is the same greenhouse design. It's going to have a insulated roof, glazing. We'll update you on this in a week or so when it's uh, roughed out. And then I'll finish you guys up on uh, some views of our chicken farm and where I am on the solar shed. So first of all, <laughs> I just dug this out this morning and found my intake to the house right here. And I'm gonna be putting this 1800 cistern in the ground here. So we're going to have lots of capture here. Now we also have uh, water rights and wells on the property, but the cisterns is a backup so that you can store. You can always pump in and have it pumping in here. It's just a backup. And this is the chicken farm. We have uh, hundreds of chickens. There's a guy going to be living up here in the winter maybe. That trailer helping out. It's a pullet house. So the solar shed and we'll just finish up the vid. I'm using Tyvek because it's, uh, you can source it. Um, we have extreme highs and lows, 50 to 60 degrees up and down. I buy all my windows from Durango Salvage. They're all recycled and really old, but they're triple paned. And this is like a $500 window I got for 50 bucks. And I have one door on. And the reason this is these doors are gonna be massive, and I'll show you this one. It weighs several hundred pounds. Is so I can use this. This is the oh shit. <laughs> this is the solar shed. And I need to get batteries in here. Right here. Thousands of pounds of them. So I need to be able to get the forklift and get heavy items in here. And that just makes it awesome. I'll take you on a quick uh, permaculture tour while we're here to see how I'm, I prep my beds here and to show you what's still coming through in November in the San Juans. This is French sorrel. It's a substitute for citrus. It's an amazing green and it's delicious. It's just like lemons. And I grow it right next to uh, stevia because if you wrap the two together, one little stevia leaf in here, um, it tastes like a lemon drop. It's delicious. And this is perennial. It'll grow all winter through the snow or you can just cover it up. And you see how I've mulched everything for the winter. Here's a rosemary, it's doing fine. You can eat that. Here's a collard tree that will make it for every, you know years. I cultivated it 
for two years to be a tree and you can just keep harvesting off the top here and mulching it and these things will grow five or six feet high and live for decades and give you collards forever now it's been it gets down to 20 degrees every night here and and we also have a nice kale back here we have a thyme that's still alive and useful for herbs and eating this is a winter green we have these edible uh, violets that you can just plant in these nooks and eat flowers whenever you want this is an amazing parsley check it out it's just fantastic it's in, in november parsley and experiments like these that come true and give you abundance are amazing and you can't figure it out until you start planting around on your property and you get results like this this is a north facing nook who would have thought it gets winter sunset and oh man that's amazing we've got a lilac here cool I'll show you some of the swale beds up here and the chickens. These are mostly dormant for the winter and cover with about a foot of uh, pig poop and chicken poop. Just waiting. It's We're in a little drought. It hasn't rained for weeks. Here's a kale still making it. A little bit infested with aphid. Some more collard trees and a lacinato kale tree, a.k.a. dino kale. We got some nice bok choy growing and some ruby red swiss shard is still kicking i could water these i'll leave you with the chickens and we'll cut it out guys thanks for joining me and we'll do another live stream soon hope you enjoyed the video i got to get back to work thanks for watching subscribe if you haven't